Hi, my name is Julia Mossbridge, and I have this experiment about time traveling photons, maybe, on experiment.com. And when experiment.com people were telling me about how to get funding for the experiment, they said, make a video where you're sharing the excitement of the original discovery, which basically means a reenactment, because I already have a pilot study that showed that it looks like future photons, or at least the existence of them, is influencing present photons, like a time travel effect. I'll explain it in a second. So we're going to do a reenactment, but I also want to keep in mind that when I was in graduate school in the 90s, I was told whenever you're explaining to the public a scientific concept, explain it as you would to your grandmother, which I found really offensive, because if they had just said grandparents, I would say, okay, because times have changed and maybe, you know, grandparents aren't aware of the most recent scientific um, advances, but uh, grandmother seemed to indicate that she would be stupid. So, mine wasn't. Um, most of the people I know have very smart grandmothers. So I'm going to explain it to you as I would to my very smart grandmother. But instead I'm going to use my husband, who actually happens to be an actor and I'm not. And uh, there he is. Hi. Hi everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <clears throat> ready, for the, ready for the part. Okay, but he doesn't, know, okay, great. he doesn't know anything about science, so he's going to play the part of... Science, that's the thing that, um, like when, when uh, Ben Franklin discovered electricity through the kite, that's uh, science, right? That's science, 100%. That was so, the last big discovery, wasn't the, it? There's the most, yes, <laughs> until this one, actually. Ah, okay, so, okay. Here, got here it. Here I am, I think, I'm in my pajamas because usually most of my uh, Eureka moments are in my pajamas. I work from home for the most part, so they're usually in this particular location, which is in my home. When you soft pants it. I'm soft pants it, by which he means I have soft pajamas on. Yeah. Which is basically a good way to spend your day. Just, that's not a scientific fact, that's just the truth of my experience. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open the file. This is what scientific discovery looks like now. You're basically staring at a computer, looking at numbers. Okay, here we go. Reenactment. Begin. <laughs> Whistle. Oh, look at all these numbers. They all represent the photon counts that came through a photomultiplier in different durations of runs of an experiment. I don't know why I'm saying that out loud because I actually know that, but maybe other people might need to know. My lady brain is hurting because it's difficult to look at numbers all day and not think of babies and soft things. So I'm going to use this menstrual pad to wipe off my forehead all the sweat of the, of the stress of thinking of things that are traditionally masculine. Numbers, 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 numbers. Wait a minute. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Hold on a second. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Here we go! Do you think that threw exactly as many tampons as I originally did? Uh, I remember being in the other room and it sounded exactly like the amount of like, tampons. Just tampons yeah. everywhere. Right? I thought, oh my god, it must be something big because she doesn't normally throw tampons like that. Okay, that's the moment where I realized that the pattern of the photomultiplier counts indicated that even in the first minute of time in an experiment in a single photon double slit setup, that you can determine how long a random number generator would extend the duration of the on time of the light source after the first minute. Honey, is that clear? What? Okay, so it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Observe this flash effect. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> okay, so imagine if... I'm getting hungry. I, hold on just one second. <laughs> this is a really important discovery, potentially. Okay. It just has to be replicated and extended, which is why I'm asking for the funding for 24 small experiments that should do that. Okay, look at this flashlight. I can do that. I got that part. Okay. The tampon thing's a great idea. I mean, the uh, <laughs> menstrual pad. Yeah, they're very helpful that way. Yeah. Um, so imagine if before I turned on the flashlight, mm -hmm. I could see... So I'm turning on the flashlight right now. See? Ooh, that's so neat. <laughs> Look at that light. <laughs> Before I turn on the flashlight, what if you could actually detect photons, just a few photons. Before I turn on the flashlight, if I turn it on for longer, like for half an hour, for instance, mm -hmm. you would actually see more photons before I turned it on. Even before the decision was made, how long that flashlight would be on. All right, yeah. that's pretty bizarre. Yeah, I get yeah. that. That makes sense. It does? Yeah. Yes. So that is what I'm interested in testing. 
again and extend it. I actually did a second pilot study and the results confirm the original, but I'm not posting those results because the random number generator wasn't a quantum-based random number generator and it wasn't used at the right time in the, in the uh, protocol, so I feel like it's shaky evidence. But I, I want you to get shaky. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> You're hurting my baby brain again. Oh, what? <laughs> Anyway, please consider funding the experiment, passing this on to other people you know, and potentially your grandmother. Can you do the flashlight again? Okay, so the flashlight. Oh, no, oh. just shine it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Thank you.